Street series as part of the larger Streets of Paris project. In this video, we'll cover how to make various cakes from polymer clay and also show you some pre-made resin cakes. Some of the techniques mentioned will have been covered in the chocolates or pastry videos before this, so I won't go into them in detail. The first type of cakes you cover is a macaron, not to be confused with macaron, and it's basically a cake uh, two sides uh, cake with a with a cream filling in the middle and so um, what I did is I made my own mold and I'll show you how to do that in a minute I, I basically shaped one out of clay I baked it and then um, and then once that was hardened I made the mold out of mold out of it so that I could just make lots of these without having to shape every one and so what you get when you put it in the mold are these little things so those are going to be uh, my, and I'll put one of these out here so you can see, these are going to be each side. And then for the cream filling, I'm going to use another chocolate, uh, a, you know, like tan uh, piece of, of polymer clay. And then uh, what I did was I just took my little straw thing that, that we've been using, or I've been using, I should say, and just punched out the centers. And then the centers, I'm just going to smash them a little bit so that they're just a little bit bigger than what they are now because of the size of the cake part. So just smash it a little bit. And now I'm going to take my cake on one side and the cake on the other side and center that. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a smish to flatten that out just a little bit because these are really domed. So that'll just give me a little bit more flattened out area. And then the important thing now is you have to make, if you look at one of these um, macarons, you'll see the edges, you can really see the cakiness of those edges. And the way I get that effect is I take this, uh, the, this uh, needle type tool, or you could use an actual needle, and I go around the edge of this and I just pick at it, just very slowly pick it out. You know, some, some of it will be picked out further than other, but just to make that little cakey area right along the edge. And I just keep going around, continuing to pick that out until I end up with something like that. And so, you know, you're not looking for perfection or whatever. You're just looking for how the cake would be right along the edge. And of course, the top part is still smooth. And then I bake it just like that. And so I've made lots of different ones. I noticed in the shops I looked at, the French shops, they had piles of these things everywhere. So they must be extremely popular in their windows and on their counters. And so what I've done is I've filled um, this little cute um, container with them and I'm gonna have that displayed in a window. And then I also made a pile of them, as you can see here. And, uh, I, and then the bottom here is polymer clay and I just, created a base and then kind of a cakey area. And then I decorated it with this. And what that is from is it's just from a mold. This is just a regular mold that uh, has a decorative design on it and um, some other circles and other things. And so I just use that, put my poly polymer clay in there, and then um, I actually cut it in sections. So it, it was easier to place it around and get it the way I wanted it by cutting it. And of course I bake that. and. Uh, once I put it on here, because I, you couldn't get it to bend if you if you baked it by itself. So that's basically how I made this. And I will go over how to make cake and icing and that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to show you what I was doing with these um, macarons. And then, of course, you could have trays of them as well. I'm sure I will have trays of these. But um, you can make them all different colors, I noticed. the different fillings, all kinds of stuff. So however you want to go with this, there's lots of options. The next thing I want to cover is cupcakes. And... You can see I've got some different ones and they are all made using this little cupcake mold and you get a little cupcake out of it like this and then you put your own topping icing whatever you would like the first ones you see here the orange ones I used uh, brown clay and then I used the air dry clay for the for the um, for the orange parts just making a ball and putting it on there and then what you see stuck inside there is one of a slice of the cane, of the orange cane. And then I sugared it by using glass glitter. And nice thing about the glass glitter is it sparkles so much nicer than the other glitters do, and you can bake it. So the, I baked it. Um, I baked these things, and I had no trouble at all. And so um, 
the next thing is that I did these and again I used the air dry white air dry clay and then I painted them with a little bit of glossy accents for the glue and then I used microbeads just some raspberry microbeads which I sprinkled on them and a little bit more of the air dry clay for uh, the little little bead that you see at the top and of course this is the polymer clay did all the bottoms out of polymer clay um, there's the polymer clay just kind of a tan color an off-white color and then the next ones are these this got a little pink base and then uh, actually this is pink polymer clay not the air dry and then I put a rose on the top and if you remember from the last video uh, I showed you how to make roses out of the uh, slices of apples and so I did the exact same thing for this I used the um, extruder that we've been using and I did a ribbon of pink clay, light pink clay, and then I used chalk and painted it with, actually with red, so I wanted it darker, and chalk goes on so light, so I painted it with red, cut out my slices, and then put them in a row, and then now I'm ready to roll this up, and I just do see a roll, and roll this up, and make a rose out of it. And then I've got a tiny little rose here. And of course, I used bigger, uh, I, I used more slices for this, and then um, what you might want to do too after you make the rose is you might decide that um, you want more color so you can go back and dust whatever you want with um, pink or red or whatever color it is you're doing to make to make it uh, a little little bit more redder if you want or a little bit more pinker you know whatever it is that you want for for the top and then I just baked the whole thing like that the next cake is uh, a small one that is not iced on the sides it's just uh, it's cake and filling and then icing on the top and then some fruit and uh, the way I did that is I used the cutter from the cutter set and I cut out pieces that will be the cake part and then pieces that will be the filling and then one that will be the icing and so the cake is the thickest the the the, um, the filling is the next thickest as you can see that and the thinnest is the top the icing and these cutters um, even though they're nice and round and pretty good, the one one fault they have is where they where they uh, meet together and where they're joined up. So they'll sometimes they'll give you this little nick. Well, that little nick it's good and bad. On one hand, you can line up all the little nicks and you'll get it really get the best lineup that you could get. But the other thing is that you've got to smooth that out. And so I'll just go through and stack these up, making sure I'm lined up as best as possible. And then that, so I've got chocolate filling, chocolate filling, and then finally the top, which is the icing. And then I'm just going to use my finger here to just kind of smooth those out. And actually with the cake part, it's not going to be that big of a deal because we're going to make the cake part look more cakey. Okay, so now that you've got it all together, you saw me with the macaroons go through and pick some of the... Um, pick some of the uh, the, the uh, uh, cake part up. You're going to do the same here, here, but not as aggressively. Here, it's much more poking. You know, just poking to give it the look of being cake. Now, of course, if you want like a dense cake where, you know, you really wouldn't see that, where you see cakes that like, especially like double chocolate cakes and stuff like that. When you look at the cake, it almost looks like a filling because it is so dense. So I don't know if you can see that. I'll have a pop-up picture there that you can see better the texture that I'm creating, but you're just, you're just poking at it with a pin. And um, of course you can use, as I say many times, you can use a needle and you're just going to want to do that with the cake layers until you're satisfied that that's cakey looking enough. And then once you're done with that, then you go ahead and bake it. And then once it's baked, I'm going to show you how to make this really super glossy. You see like chocolate sometimes how super, super glossy they are on the top. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is now baked and I'm going to go ahead and add the, uh, the glossy accents to this. And the way I do it, I'm going to, I'm testing the, the uh, tube just to make sure I don't have bubbles and that it's flowing. The other ones I've showed you when I've, uh, added a glaze I've painted it on because I've already got something on there fruit or something like this but this I want this really high glossy sheen and so I don't want any brush marks 
So I'm just going to apply glossy accents the way you would if you were using this in a paper product, the way you've seen me do this. So I'm just going to make this thin layer of the glossy accents on top of this. And of course, it, it shrinks when it dries, so it won't be as thick as it seems. And just be careful not to do too much so that it, it does like to, to dome up, and, it, and it's really good about not losing its edges and, and flowing places you don't want it to flow. But if you get too much of it on there, it is going to start dripping off the edges, so you don't want to do that. So you want to leave it like that and let it dry, and then I will show you one. Hopefully you can see this, um, this little uh, cake. You can see the gloss that's on that. If you can't see it here, I'll... Uh, here, I'll pop up a picture so that you can see it, but very, very glossy. And this is one of those cakes where I talked about dense cakes like this, where really the, the brown is the chocolate cake and the white is the filling, but um, it's a really, really dense cake. So I didn't do picking out, you know, the picking out process. And then once it's dry, I mean, either you want it to be glazed like that, um, or maybe you want to add some stuff to it. And here are three that are like that, three dense cases, cakes. And I've used the blackberries that I made on this one, the strawberries, this is the cane. And then here are um, a set of sugared uh, lemons. And these are all just glued on with more glossy accents. But, but by doing the, the gloss first and just letting it go, then I'm able to get that really glossy finish. And then um, I did come in and, and paint over very carefully with some glossy accents over the berries just to make them look um, a little bit uh, uh, candied or not candied but but uh, glazed and then of course these I'm covering with the glitter so I don't have to worry about doing anything to that and then just to give you another example of cakes that are that are um, dense cakes like these here these two cakes what I've done is made the layers and then I've cut up some of the some of the um, some of the uh, canes and just glued them on top. But I did not do a glossy finish on these. These are just matte finished. And then just glued those in place. And so that's a good example of that. Now let's move on to the next one. The next cake is a ladyfinger cake. And basically it's a cake inside with ladyfingers all around it. Bordering it. And I've got two different sizes here. And just like with the macarons, I started by making myself a couple of molds. I worked on making really nice ones in two sizes and then uh, made a mold out of those and then now I can make as many as I want. It'd be so hard to try to shape these and make them you know pretty much the same uh, in size and, and depth and whatnot. And so um, the first thing I do is cut the cake on the inside. Now um, let me talk a little bit about cutting. If you're not going to be cutting the cake open to look at the inside or it's not going to be exposed like the last cakes that we saw, then you can cut the inside out of anything. You could even use junk clay. Now in this case, I, I'm not going to be cutting it open and I'm not going to be giving it the texture, but you will still see parts of the cake. So I did make it all one color and I made it the chocolate, but instead of cutting layer by layer, I try to cut as many layers at a time as I can. So I stacked up clay as with each piece being as thick as I could get it, and then just cut through the whole thing with the cutter. And the reason I do that if I can is, is that you will get such a smooth edge because when you stack it, no matter how careful you are, that edge just isn't quite as smooth as when you can do it all in one cut. So even if, it, if, it, if I couldn't stack it up to get the whole thing, you know, maybe I do two stacks and then just put those together. So basically, the more you can cut at once, the nicer edges you're going to get, the nicer size. So that's what I did with this. Then I went and made a whole bunch of the um, the little uh, lady fingers. And uh, I'm going to use the same technique that I used before in using a toothbrush to give it texture. And I'll just take it and dab it with the toothbrush. just to give it a little bit of texture. And then once I have the amount that I want, then I will go ahead and brush it with the chalk to make it look like it's baked and just give it some color. All the way around. 
And once I get enough of this on here and I'm comfortable with how it looks, then I'm going to attach these to the side of the, the chocolate cake in the middle. And I'm going to do that by applying some of the, the, um, the liquid clay. And I'm going to use it again, acting kind of like a glue. Like I said before, it's not actually glue. And I will just paint the sides of that and then attach these. These almost stick without it, but just I just to figure like with having just a little bit of that, it's, it's just a little bit more secure. And then I will just continue to do that all the way around. Now it's up to you as to how much cake, how much cake you want in the center. I have left just a little bit of a gap. The lady fingers are a little bit taller than the cake. And this one is almost flush here. And with the with the uh, strawberries, and then the one here with the um, with the apples is almost flush too. The cake is just a little bit lower than the lady fingers, but it's up to you. The cake could be higher, it could be a lot lower. I mean, if you were going to put some kind of filling in here, and then maybe some fruit or something, so it's really up to you as to how high you want that cake to be. But just think about that in terms of what are you going to put on the top. So once you get done with all of this, then you can um, you could either bake it like this because whatever you're going to add on the top, like these are pre-made apples, so I didn't want to put those through the oven. So I basically baked the cake with the lady fingers and then glued these in after the fact. Um, the strawberries, I had baked them ahead already because a lot of times I just make up a bunch of fruit and then I use it whenever I need it. And But if, if you didn't, you could just go ahead and make your fruit, put it on there and bake everything all at once. So it's just kind of however you want to go about it. And um, so that's a nice way to, to make the lady fingers. Now, let me just show you another example of what you can do with the lady fingers. You can just do something like this where you've got individual ones where you're just using the one side and you know, maybe you're icing them or um, just adding these. I iced this, just put a little white frosting on that with some um, with some kiwi. And then these are the blueberries that I made. And this is just cutting up um, the uh, one of the canes. So, you know, you can you can make something out of just the lady fingers by themselves, obviously, because that's how they are. And then uh, you can also do something like this, where I have taken the little ones, the little version, and I've doubled it up and put some cream in between, and then did I did some icing on the top. So, you know, you can make these molds work for a lot of things. The cakes, making little independent pieces. So it's very versatile to make a mold, you know, using um, using the lady fingers. And then, like I say, you've got a lot of different ways that, that you can use those. Now let's get a little fancier with a really pretty white and pink cake with a big bow on the top. And then it, the bottom is surrounded with paper flowers. So very, very pretty cake, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. First thing I'll do is now talk about icing the cake. Most of the time, this is the way I do it. Um, I just use the, uh, the uh, clay like you would a fondant on a, on a uh, regular cake. And I see a lot of people will cut a big sheet of it and then uh, drape it over it and, and fit it down, and mold it and pinch away the things that, the, the amount that you don't need because it's, you, there'll always be too much. I never have very good success with that. It, it usually looks up, ends up looking like a mess. So what I'm gonna do in the way it works best for me is I just cut a thin layer for the top out of the same, using the same cutter as I used for this. And I cut this in two big chunks, um, as I said before, to cut as few as possible, just to get as nice and smooth an edge as possible. And I just apply that to the top. And one of the things that you want to be sure of is that you don't have any bubbles. So you want everything to be smooth because if you have any air caught underneath, it will bubble up and then you won't, you know, the icing won't be laying nice and flat. And then I just cut a strip that's usually a little bit longer than the height of the cake. And then I just apply that strip to the edge all the way around, making sure that it's really down on the cake and there's not going to be any bubbles. And then bring it around here. And then once I get it around, cut away the excess because I want the two ends to pretty much meet. So they pretty much meet. You could take a little bit more away. 
And then you notice I've got extra here. So I'm gonna come in and use a pair of scissors and just cut that right down to the edge. You know, I might cut not quite all the way just to make sure I don't cut too far. Better to cut off some more than to cut too much and then you're out of luck. And get that as close as you can without too much. And then I'll work on just making sure that everything is smoothed down, that there are no bumps, lumps, nothing. And that there, that I don't have any air trapped in here. Maybe roll it a little bit, get it as smooth as possible. And then to deal with this um, edge here where the two meet together, I just use my finger to just gently smooth it. And make sure your clay is pretty soft and then that way the smoothing process will work better. And by the time I'm done here, you will not even see that there was a seam there. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the edge here. I'm just going to start smoothing it and making the edges melt together. And like I say, I've seen other people do the other technique, but it just, for me, I'm not just gonna show you because I don't do it well. And this just seems to work the best for me. So here, I'm just continuing to smooth that. And once I get it where I want it, then that's it. And I can go ahead and bake it if I want, but I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm gonna show you how to make a bow for the top. Making the bow is really easy. Um, it starts with, I use the extruder to, uh, and I think this might be the sl smallest slot. It has, the set has more than one slotted uh, template in it. And extruding a bunch of ribbons of chocolate clay, which is I'm gonna do chocolate for the pink cake. And the first thing I need to do is decide, this is just a series of loops, that's all it is. There's nothing more to it. I just have to decide how big is my first set of loops. And so I usually just take the ribbon and, or maybe even just take a piece off to make it easier and just take it and figure out, okay, I want my furthest loop to, yeah, I don't want it to go over the edge, but I want it to be a full bow. If you want it smaller, make your loop smaller, but just decide how big this loop is gonna be and how long this little strip is gonna be. And then once you know that, then you can start cutting a bunch of those. And as you see here, that's what I've done. I've got a whole bunch ready to go. And that's the first set. Now I cut an extra one and that is to help me cut the next one. So if you want a two layers, which I think I think that's what looks the prettiest is two layers of, of ribbon, then um, what I do is take that one and then I know I need to make it smaller so I can come in and just cut a little bit off this. And then I've got a little bit smaller one. And even if I want smaller than that, I think I probably do. Just take a little bit more off of that. And that would be my second row. So I cut a bunch of those. Now, um, I do also want to go ahead and add some ribbon to the cake. So I'll want to do that. And while I'm doing that and showing you, it's pretty simple, just over like this. And I'll just want to get rid of my excess. I'm gonna get my scissors. Your clay should be very, very soft for doing this. And the reason is, as you make these loops, if it's not soft, it'll crack right where it's looped. But if, you're, if your clay is really soft, it won't, you won't have a problem. And how I soften clay is just add liquid clay to it and keep kneading it or running it through the uh, machine, the pasta machine, and get it as soft as you can. And then without it being just you know, liquid or too mushy. Now, if I have some really hard dry clay, you know, that, you know that'll happen if it sits around for a while. This is not quite centered. Uh, what I do is I pound it out with a mallet as flat as I can get it. And then I add liquid clay, I fold it over and I pound again. And I may do that a few times to where it gets malleable enough that I can run it through my pasta machine. And then I just start running it through my pasta machine uh, as many times as I need to. And I can, I can still add more liquid clay if I need to um, as I'm running it through the pasta machine. But that will make the clay really nice and soft. And also, of course, in making these ribbons, uh, this uh, bow and all, you don't have to have an extruder. You could always just um, 
cut these out for yourself. Roll them out. Roll out sheets of clay that are that are even, and then uh, and then uh, cut them for yourself. But extruder just makes it so nice and fast, and then you know everything is equal. And you can see I put the one oh, ruining my clay here. I put the one um, all the way across, and this I'm just doing the center because I don't want another big lump in the middle. We're going to have enough lumps in the middle with the ribbon. And by the way, this is exactly the same way I make a ribbon if I was doing this for another type of project and I was using actual ribbon and I wanted to make miniature miniature bows like this. So there we go. Now we've got our ribbon going across. And once I'm done with that, then I'm going to start adding these. And I basically add it on and kind of pinch it, push it down, kind of smish it down. And then I'll just keep going around adding these and smushing. Just like that. And then you can decide how many loops you want. I kind of like six myself. And if your if your if your little ribbon gets flat, you can out, I always just kind of push it like that. But you could also stick something in there and just fluff it back up again. So if like here it gets stuck down a little too much, take a little toothpick in there, just get it all fluffed up again. So that's the first row. So now I'm just going to come in and I'll work in between the ones that I already did and put my second row in. And I'm going to do that and then come back and show you the finishing step. Now I've got all my loops on, so I've got six of the bigger ones and four of the smaller ones. On the pink cake, I made six of the smaller ones, but it was a bigger cake. So I think with, with this small of a cake, it just gets too busy in the middle here. And I just want to make sure that everything's pressed down really good. And I took a toothpick and I fluffed all my, fluffed all my little loops up so that they look nice and uh, cute. And then I just need something to cover up the middle and, and to look like the knot that you might see. And so I've just looped another little piece of clay and I'm just going to put that into the center of this and that will be the finishing touch of the bow. And now if I'm done with whatever I'm going to do to this, I can now bake it. To create the purple cake, I used a nested set of oval cutters to cut each one out and I iced them in the way I previously showed you. And then on the top, I have a cascade of paper flowers, different uh, shades of purple and cream. And then the design that you see around each of the layers comes from this uh, mold. And so um, I uh, molded the three different or the two different colors of purple and then put them all on the cake before I baked it. And then the mold, the, the uh, design had kind of like a little center dot on it. And I just used some acrylic paint to uh, paint that white just to make it pop out. For the red cake, I used a clay that had a sparkle in it, um, kind of a little bit of an iridescent look to it, and it came that way. And then to decorate it, I used uh, I used a cane, a heart cane, where I cut the pieces up a little bit thicker than I did for other things. And in the center, I have a glass heart. Now, I baked it with all of the uh, cane hearts, but not with the glass heart because the glass would have been fine, but I don't know what the um, what what the material is, the gold. I don't know what it, what it was used to paint it. So my concern was that somehow maybe the heat would damage it. But I did make an indentation in the cake before I baked it so that it would be there. And then I used glue to uh, glue the heart in place. The three-tier wedding cake was, again, used with a, a set of nested cutters. And um, the, the uh, lace work that you see around the each of the layers is a sticker that I have. And I could see also using actual lace. And then the flowers again are, are uh, paper flowers. And I also use stamen. And the, with the flowers, you can see the flowers I started with, they're a little bit bigger than what I ended up using. Um, and so I ended up removing the greenery because I didn't want to show that. And I also ended up removing several of the petals till I got uh, smaller rosebuds that would work a little bit better. And then I also added some uh, peach colored stamen in there as well. 
And the two swans are just plastic and they were in my stash. I, they were actually kind of a pink color, but not the color of the cake. So I ended up painting them a white just to make it all work together. Another option to what I just showed you with the, uh, with the red and, and chocolate layer cake is this lemon one that I've done. And uh, I used an oval cutter, cutter for that and cutting each of the layers. And I used the picking pricking technique to make it look more cake-like. And then on the top, um, I iced it just on the top instead of the whole thing with white. And I actually took the white um, clay and mixed in a little bit of the, um, the translucent liquid clay and got more of an icing that I just spread on the top. And then I embedded the um, the, the uh, lemons. Those are just from a cane that I cut up and embedded those and then baked it all at once. To get the white icing that you see on the lemon cake, I uh, start with mixing white clay, just as, sm as small as you can break it apart with some of the liquid clay. And um, the, hard, the only hard part about this is just getting the white clay to break down. And it, you know, it, it gives you kind of an icing that looks like powdered sugar icing. If you've ever made that for something. And um, I have this tool in here that I'm using that's got a flat end on it so that I can kind of pull up the pieces and smash them down and mix them up. Um, so you want to get this smooth. And then the consistency, if you see it now, how it just kind of runs off of the, the tool, that's kind of what you want. And then you just want to come in, if like this, I'm just going to drizzle. The other one, I just drizzled everything on the top and then smoothed it out. But something like this, it's like a little bunt cake and just drizzle over it, dragging the little stuff that's dripping back and forth. So um, that's how you would do that. And you can see right here, I've got a bubble. You do need to make sure those are out. And I just make this up and if I'm gonna be working on stuff for a while, this will stay like this for quite a while. And if it gets a little stiffer, then I'll just add a little bit more liquid liquid clay into it. And then if you just wanna, if you want a, a much more translucent look uh, of, of icing, like, like I have on this thing here, then you can just use the, um, the translucent clay, right, liquid clay right on it, just drizzle it on there um, and you'll get that, you'll still get the kind of a whitish color, but it'll be, um, it won't be, it won't dry nearly as dark as this stuff will, or I should say nearly as white as this will. Now, if you want something really over the top, you could make this cross cut cake with all of these little studs in the bow and the top. And of course, I've showed you how to make the bow. And um, these are just two separate cakes that I, that I made um, with punch, with uh, the, uh, the punches uh, or the, the uh, cutters. And it's pretty simple to do. It's kind of more, it's, it's more, the tough part about it is making sure you're not erasing what you do. But what I'm doing is I'm just using my cutter or something with a very, very sharp edge. And then I am just, this is, this is all wet. It's wet inside. The clay is wet on the outside. It's been iced the way I've been showing you. And I just make an indentation into the icing like that. And then I want to make more, and you could measure this, but I kind of eyeball it. Um, I'll make one there, pretty much equal distance apart, and I make one there. And then I'll do it on the other side, trying to make it the same, if possible. <laughs> and then I'll do it again. And I didn't get that one quite deep enough yet. You want to be able to see it. And then I'll turn it and I'll do it the other way. Now you could do this square too. You wouldn't have to do it on a diagonal if you didn't want to. And I'll make sure I get it in there deep enough. And again, now the tough part has to do with going on the side. So I want to follow these same lines on the side. So I've got this line here. Get a little deeper. I want to follow that line over here as if it continued. Then I want to follow this line as if it continued. And the same here. 
and this line should end up in the corner. And then I want to come and do the same thing the other way. But now it's kind of it's easier because you can see where the other lines are. And here I'm just doing two lines instead of four, or instead of three. Then I want to turn and do not nick, don't, do not get a nick out. You're not supposed to do that. Then turn and do the same thing on this side. And as you go around, the tough part is, you know, you're touching the top and you're touching the side you just did. So you may very you may have to go through after the fact very carefully. And you can see already that I've already kind of touched this. And I'm going to come back in and just remake the line just so that it's nice and clear. Because it's very difficult to touch this and move it and uh, not erase the lines that you just made since the clay is soft. And so I will do that. I would go all the way around making lines all the way around, then going back around just making sure everything, the lines are still visible. And then once I've done that, I bake it. And then after I baked these, I glazed it with uh, glossy accents. And then these are little uh, studs, they're flat backed. And then in between every single crisscross on both of these, I added the stud. And you know, then you should be able to see the lines. You can see this without the studs here, what it looks like. And I, I did the bow first. I put the bow on first before I put the studs on because one, you don't want the bow, try to put it on top of the studs. And you, you use less studs, obviously, if you, if you just put your bow on first and then work with the intersections of the triangles that you're making or the uh, diamonds that you're making, um, work with those intersections and just put your little studs there. And that is all you have to do to make a really fancy cake. Another decor decorative treatment involves uh, adding little bits of chocolate to the sides. And so what I have here, I'm starting with uh, a stack of, of uh, a lighter chocolate and or brown. And um, all I'm gonna do is roll it in these small little pieces of chocolate and a darker chocolate. And to do this, um, to get them like this, I use the cutter to cut it up. But the trouble is, if, if the drier your clay is the better because then they won't, it won't try to clump back together again. But one of the things that you can do to help you uh, get it into little pieces is to put it in your freezer and get it really cold so that's harder and then chop it up and then just keep doing that until you get it as fine as you need to get it. You might, you might even want to like prep this way ahead of time, let it sit around, let it dry out. Um, you know, whatever to get these tiny pieces, but that's basically what you want. You want these to be as tiny as possible. And then of course your clay on your, on your uh, cake should be wet so that what you can do is go through here and just roll, roll it on. And it's okay if you don't cover up all of the other chocolate and you can remove any extra stuff and fill in any that you don't want or that you do want, I should say, if it misses an area. And then I just give it a light press to make sure that it's not gonna come off. And so you just wanna keep doing that and adding more and more of this clay to the sides. I look like I have some more white in there. And just picking it up and continuing. And of course you could do this with any colors you wanted. It wouldn't have to be, you know, a dark, a dark chocolate on a light. So you just want to make sure the whole thing is filled in as much as you want or as little as you want. And then when you're finished and you get it where you want it, you can go ahead and bake it or unless you want to put something on top that you want to bake. And how I decided to dress this up was I put the cherries I made in the center and then I already showed you how to do these little dollops of whipped cream around the edges. And then so that's how I finished up this cake. So now let's say that you want to make a cake that you want to cut open. You want to be able to see the slices of the cake. So you would go about it the way we've gone about making layers. So I've got a, a darker pink, a, a white, pink, white, and then I've iced it with this blue icing. Now, the next step, I don't do, I didn't do the stuff on the top. Um, the next thing I did was I came in with my cutter. This won't go back exactly the way it came in. And I sliced out whatever pieces I wanted from this. So I did two, you could do more, or you could slice the whole thing. Then once I had it apart, then I used that picking technique again. So I went in and picked all of the areas that were supposed to be cake. I left the, the filling alone and I did it on these individual pieces as well. And then I added the things on the top. Now you can either bake this like this first and then add your things on the top, which is what I actually ended up doing. I made my roses separately and I made them the way I've been showing you. 
and uh, then I just glued them on. Or you could have put them on ahead of time and when you went to bake it, you could bake it all at once. So you're just gonna have to decide depending on what's on the, you wanna put on the top of the cake, whether or not you want to cut it uh, before or after. And one thing I will caution you about cutting the wet cake open is, and, and depending on what you have on top, is that the blade can end up dragging, like if this was covered with something solid, this blade could end up dragging whatever's on the top into the cake. And, you know, some would say, well, that's the way a cake will really look if you cut it like that. Or you might think that's a little bit too messy and you don't want to do that. So um, the only challenge here with the roses was I just wanted to make sure that they were evenly spaced and I had one on each slice of cake. And so I decided if I did it after the fact, I could make sure that it, it looked the way I wanted it to look. But it's just pretty easy just to go ahead and cut your cake open if you want to. Just make sure you, you do all your layers and you make things look like a cake. One of the other things that I've used to decorate uh, the things I've been making, the treats, little sweets, is uh, some nuts. And I've been using walnuts and almonds. And I have a little almond here on the chocolate and another one here on this little pastry and this little cake. And then I have a walnut on this little cake. And to mix the colors, because I couldn't really find a color that was what I wanted, I ended up using um, to get to this, this is the color I used for the almond, I ended up using burnt umber, a, a, a reddish brown, and that's the same color I've used on a lot of the cakes, some white to lighten it, and then some red to give it a little bit more of a red look. And I started with the burnt umber, lightened it up, and then added a little bit of red in, and then just slowly and slowly mix in more white and more red. And of course, if you go too far, you can go back and add more of the brown, and then, uh, then start working on it again. But you want you want kind of a, a lighter reddish color, that nutty color. And then um, for the walnut is a little bit lighter. And this is the walnut that I did. And I basically I got to this point, then I used some of this and started adding um, a little bit more white to lighten it a little bit and also added some red and, uh, and a tiny bit more, a, a, a tiny bit of yellow. And so, um, so that's how I ended up getting that color for, for, the, uh, for the walnut. And then you can see this color for the almond. So to, based on how large you want the nuts to be, you'll have to determine how much clay you, you'll need. And um, I, I just used the little straw punch to punch some out of this. I, it's real pretty thin, but I doubled it up. And so you'll just have to do it a few times just to figure out get the right amount. So that, that ended up being about the right amount to make, uh, make an almond that looked like this. And so you're looking, you really want it like a teardrop shape is what you're looking for. So you just want to elongate it a little bit, the circle, and then um, just kind of pinch it a little bit until you get this shape. You can see there. And the next thing you're going to want to do to, uh, to make it look more like an almond is you're going to want to take a sharp instrument like this or, or a needle and you just want to draw some lines on the top of it. And that will give you, that will give you something that looks like an almond. Now the walnut's a little bit harder. I use a little bit more clay. Here I'm kind of I'm kind of getting it into an, like an oblong shape to start with. The hardest part of this is just making the lines and things that to make it look something like a like an almond or like a uh, walnut. So I want kind of an oblong shape. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to make some lines. So I'm just I'm just pressing this in to make some lines like that. Then I'm taking the needle and I'm going on the ends and I'm making an indentation on each end. Looks kind of like a foot. <laughs> and then I'm doing the same on the other end, an indentation on each side. And now I'm gonna go on the sides and I'm gonna do the same thing. Indentation again and indentation again. Got those a little too deep on that side. And then you end up with something that looks like a uh, 
a walnut. And you can always come back in and redo your lines a little bit if it gets too muddy by handling it. That's always the trick is not getting too muddy by handling it. And no two will look the same. <laughs> At least mine don't. And there's another one that you can see. And these are perfect one things to make molds out of so that you don't have to keep doing this however many times you want to make these. And so what I use um, to make molds is something called um, ice resin. And it's been called a lot of different things. I've been using this product for about, oh, I don't know, maybe eight years or so since it first came out. And it comes in two containers. And I know there's a lot of other molding products, but I got used to using this a long time ago and I've just kind of stuck with it. it it's always worked well. I've never had any problems. And so um, it's, it's it used to be, it, it's just changed colors and it's changed names, but it's the same stuff that's been out there forever. And um, there's two different components. It's a, it's a petroleum based product and the chemical reaction does not happen until the two of them are mixed together. So the way to start, this stuff lasts forever too, it doesn't dry out, is to just get a little bit of the clay of one and a little bit of the clay of the other. You want equal amounts. And so you just have to figure out, okay, how much clay am I going to, or how much, how much of this molding material am I going to need to make a mold for something that small? And you can do whatever you want with this until you mix it together. And so if I figure, okay, if I do an indentation like that, okay, if I have that much, then if I have equal amounts, because I know that'll be plenty to cover that, and you don't really need to use more than, than you do. Um, and if I just get two pretty equal amounts of the two, so I know that that will be enough to cover this nut. And then I mix the two together. And as soon as the colors are blended, you, uh, you're going to, to use it and press your item in it. And you wanna work fast because once you start mixing these, they, it'll start hardening relatively quickly. So once I get a light gray, I'm just gonna roll it into a ball, press it down a little bit, put it on here, take my nut, press my nut in there, press it all the way down, I'll pick it up. And the reason I needed something to pick it up with. The reason I want to pick it up is I want the other side to be as flat as possible so that I can use this to, as you've seen me do on other molds, so that I can use this to, um, you can see that, so that I can use this to scrape off the excess, the excess uh, clay from the mold. And if I don't turn it over and try to get it flat on that side, it'll be, it'll be, It'll have bumpy edges or the edges will go up. And so this won't glide across it smoothly. So after I get it in there, then just flip it over and then just let it sit. And yeah, oh, maybe 10 minutes or so, it'll be hard. So once that you feel this is hard, it's done. And now you have a mold and I can make as many of these as I want and I don't have to sit there and do them every little one. Now in the first video, I talked about using beads for chocolates and especially something that has either a unique shape or has some kind of texture on it. And these beads that you see here, um, I just thought they were so cute, I couldn't cover them up. So I decided to make them into cake pops. So if you've ever been to Starbucks, you know they sell those cake pops that are delicious. And so this is my own little version of uh, different flavored cake pops. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't want to uh, make your own pastries, or like me, you want to maybe mix some things that you make with some pre-made things. Alpha Stamps is carrying a whole line of resin um, treats. Uh, I used all the ones that you see here and mixed them in with, with my other ones that I made. And, and they also have uh, lots of other little chocolates and other things as well. So um, that's another option if you don't want to make it or you wanna just mix it in with, with what you're doing. In addition, um, I'll show you some of the uh, little pastries, cakes, whatever, in these little uh, miniature cake trays with the, with the glass covers or whatever. I think they're actually plastic. I'm not sure that the, any of them are glass. But um, you can see that that really dresses them up and makes them look pretty, and they're carrying a line of those as well. I hope you've enjoyed the series of videos. You'll see all these goodies again when I cover building the chocolate shop. With the exception of the clay and tools, most of the products I used are being carried by Alpha Stamps. Below in the YouTube description area is where you'll find the link to the corresponding blog post. The post has a link to tons of pictures, information on the collage sheet and digi kit, and free images. 
plus the complete supply list for all three videos. In a couple of weeks, I'll be posting the next in the series of videos, which will cover perfumes, cosmetics, purses, and shoes.